Hello students, in today's video we are going to discuss pathophysiology of gout. Gout is a disorder of purine metabolism. As we all know, purines are nitrogenous bases namely adenine and guanine. Now these bases are mainly required for the synthesis of nucleotides and nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA and RNA. Now we will study about purines in detail uh, during this video. Now uric acid is the uh, breakdown product of uh, purine metabolism. So gout is characterized by hyperuricemia that is increased uric acid in the blood. Now uric acid exists as urate ion in the plasma at a physiological uh, pH of 7.4. Now, the normal plasma urate concentration is uh, 2 to 6 mg per deciliter. But if the serum urate concentration exceeds 6.8 mg per deciliter, then these urate ions, they become insoluble in the plasma. And these urate ions, they uh, combine or they bind to the sodium ions to form monosodium urate crystals. And these crystals deposit in the joints, bones, soft tissues and also in the kidneys. So gout is a disorder of purine metabolism. It is characterized by hyperuricemia and deposition of monosodium urate crystals in the joints, bones, soft tissues and also in the kidneys. Now look at this figure of the foot. Now this is the big toe. Now these are the two phalanges, one, two. Now the joint that is the most commonly affected by the gout is the metatarsophalangeal joint of the big toe. Now these are the uric acid crystals which are deposited in this joint. Now the other joints that are affected by the gout include ankles, knees, wrist and the elbows. Now these monosodium urate crystals they deposit in the joints and produce inflammation. So the gout is also called as inflammatory arthritis. Now the gout is described in four distinct stages. Asymptomatic hyperuricemia, then acute gout attacks characterized by flare-up of gout. Intense symptoms of gout are seen during the flare-up of gout. Then intercritical period, then chronic tophaceous gout. Now let's understand all these stages one by one in detail. Now this chart describes the uh, different stages of gout. Now stage 1 is asymptomatic hyperuricemia. Here the blood uric acid concentration exceeds 6.8 mg per deciliter but there are no symptoms of gout. Now stage 2 is the acute gout attack. Now look at this figure of a synovial joint. This is a synovial joint. Now deposition of monosodium urate crystals in the joint induce inflammation. And there is flare up of the gout symptoms. The symptoms of gout become very intense and painful. There is sudden onset of very severe pain and swelling due to the inflammation in the joint. And it is typically monoarticular, that is, deposition of these monosodium urate crystals are seen in one joint. Now, as discussed, metatarsophalangeal joint of the big toe is most commonly affected joint, and this joint becomes red, swollen, warm, and tender. You can't even touch the joint, it is so painful. Now, this uh, acute gout attack. It initially resolves in 3 to 14 days. So these attacks are self-limiting. Now gout flares are common in, at night and in the early morning. Fever, uh, general feeling of illness and fatigue could also be seen during the acute gout attacks. Now stage 3 is the intercritical period. Now look at this figure of the joint. There is dissolution of monosodium urate crystals. So the acute attack resolves on its own as the monosodium urate crystals are removed by the phagocytosis induced by the immune cells of the body. And now the patient is in the intercritical stage. 
Now, as monosodium urate crystals are no longer there, no symptoms are seen in this stage. And this period may last for months to years. Now, the disease seems to be inactive. But as the blood uric acid levels are still high, subclinical inflammation remains in the joints. Now, stage 4 is the chronic tophaceous gout. Now, this is the advanced chronic gout. Now, it takes more than 10 years uh, to develop after an initial acute attack of gout. Now, toffee deposit in the joints. Now, look at this figure of the synovial, uh, synovial joint. This is the uh, pink colored synovial membrane. This is the blue color articular cartilage and the two bones. Now, this is tophus. Now, these are monosodium urate crystals in the center of the tophus. Now, these crystals are surrounded by the inflammatory cells that is leukocytes like uh, macrophages, neutrophils. Now, these inflammatory cells, they release lysosomal enzymes. They also release cytoplasmic enzymes that destroy uh, the synovial membrane, articular cartilage and also the bone. So, tophus is a collection of uh, monosodium urate crystals surrounded by inflammatory cells and connective tissue. Now, this causes a chronic synovitis that is inflammation of the synovial membrane. Now, deposition of tophus in the joints represents advanced chronic gout. And uh, at this stage, gout is usually polyarticular. That is, a number of joints in the body are affected by the gout. And during this stage, number of gout attacks increase. And frequent attacks are uh, seen during this chronic tophaceous gout. So, these are the four different stages of gout. Now, as we have learned by now that gout occurs due to increased concentration of uric acid in the blood. Now, as this uric acid is the end product of uh, purine metabolism, it is important to understand synthesis of uh, purines and their metabolism. Now, as we know, purines are nitrogenous bases, namely adenine and guanine. Now, adenine and guanine are essential for the synthesis of nucleotides, which further produce DNA and RNA. Now, this is a schematic diagram that depicts synthesis of purines in green and their metabolism in red color. Now, this is de novo, that is new synthesis of uh, purines by the cell. Now, adenine is synthesized as nucleotide adenosine monophosphate while guanine is synthesized as nucleotide guanosine monophosphate. So, guanosine monophosphate is GMP and uh, uh, adenosine monophosphate is AMP. Now, both these uh, adenine and guanine nucleotides are derived from the nucleotide inosine monophosphate. Now, ribose 5-phosphate accepts 1-phosphate from the ATP and becomes 5-phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. Now, uh, in short, PRPP. Now, this PRPP in turn synthesizes inosine 5-monophosphate through a complex pathway. So, this is how purine nucleotides that is uh, adenosine monophosphate and uh, guanosine monophosphate are synthesized. Now, let us uh, understand how these uh, nucleotides are broken down. Now, breakdown of these purine nucleotides is shown here in the red color. Now, inosine 5-monophosphate is broken down to inosine. Inosine is further broken down to hyposanthin. Hyposanthin produces xanthin and finally, there is production of uric acid. Now, similarly, adenosine monophosphate is broken down to adenosine. Adenosine further produces hyposanthin, then xanthin and finally again uric acid is produced. Now, on the other hand, GMP that is a guanosine monophosphate is broken down to xanthine and finally again uric acid is produced. So, this is how uric acid is produced by the breakdown or metabolism of purine nucleotides namely inosine 5 monophosphate, adenosine monophosphate and guanosine monophosphate. All of them produce uric acid.
now one very important pathway is the salvage pathway now this salvage pathway is shown here by the blue color arrows now uh, this salvage pathway it recovers hypoxanthin and guanin produced during the breakdown of purines now enzyme hypoxanthin phosphoribosyl transferase recovers hypoxanthin and converts it back to the nucleotide inosin monophosphate in the presence of prpp now since this hypoxanthin is recovered less uric acid is produced and this imp is further utilized for the synthesis of amp and gmp so there is more synthesis of nucleotides and less synthesis of uric acid similarly uh, guanin is recovered by the enzyme guanin phosphoribosyl transferase in the presence of prpp now this recovered guanin is used to produce nucleotide gmp so this reduces synthesis of uric acid so salvage pathway Uh, reduces synthesis of uric acid and increases the synthesis of nucleotides now very important to remember that deficiency of the enzyme hgprt that is hypoxanthin or guanin phosphoribosyl transferase blocks the salvage pathway and because of this because of the deficiency of hgprt more of uh, uric acid is synthesized which could cause gout so deficiency of the enzyme hgprt could cause can cause gout now let's study uh, causes of gout now as we have already understood uh, the main cause of gout is uh, hyperuricemia that is the increased concentration of uric acid in the blood now this increased concentration of uh, uric acid in the blood is produced uh, by two main reasons either there is overproduction of uric acid or there is reduced excretion of uric acid now reduced excretion of uric acid accounts for hyperuricemia in 90% cases while overproduction of uric acid is responsible for hypersemia in only 10% cases now overproduction of uric acid is caused due to the consumption of purine rich diet now this uh, diet includes consumption of uh, seafood like uh, consumption of shrimps uh, tuna fish then uh, consumption of red meat like uh, pork and beef then consumption of uh, alcoholic drinks like beer and wine now consumption of alcohol causes dehydration and dehydration precipitates formation of monosodium urate crystals now consumption of soft drinks uh, with high fructose for example carbonated drinks like colas or corn syrups stimulate increased production of uric acid now metabolism of fructose requires atp so when fructose is Uh, metabolized atp is converted to nucleotide amp so this causes accumulation of nucleotide amp and when amp is metabolized uric acid is produced so this increases concentration of uric acid in the blood uh, now the second very important uh, reason for the overproduction of uh, uric acid is the increased cell breakdown now when more and more cells are broken down more dna and rna breaks so more breakdown of purine nucleotides and therefore more synthesis of uric acid now during treatment of cancers like uh, leukemia lymphoma polycythemia by chemotherapy or by the radiation therapy there is massive breakdown of cells in short period of time now this causes increased production of uric acid so these are the two main reasons for the overproduction of uric acid that is purine rich diet and excessive cell breakdown or cell turnover now uh, let's see uh, let's uh, see to the facts that reduce excretion of uric acid now uric acid is primarily excreted in the urine by the kidneys now drugs like uh, thiazides uh, furosemide pyrazinamide ethambutol reduce uric acid excretion by the kidneys now look at this figure now as we all know nephron is a functional unit of kidneys and first part of the nephron is the proximal convoluted tubule now these are the cells of proximal convoluted tubule and this side is the lumen now this uh, figure shows a transporter 
Now thiazide, thiazide diuretics, they compete with uric acid for this transporter. Now thiazide bind to this transporter and they are excreted in the urine while uric acid is retained within the proximal convoluted tubule and from the proximal convoluted tubule uric acid is further reabsorbed in the blood. So instead of getting excreted in the presence of thiazide diuretics, uric acid is reabsorbed in the blood from the proximal convoluted tubule and this causes hyperuricemia. So this increases the concentration of uric acid in the blood. Now a chronic kidney disease reduces glo uh, glomerular filtration rate and this also reduces the excretion of uric acid. Now in addition to this dehydration reduces clearance of uh, uric acid. Now consumption of alcohol and uh, caffeinated drinks can cause dehydration and dehydration reduces excretion of uric acid. Now next cause is the genetic uh, predisposition. This can also cause uh, hyperuricemia. Now as discussed earlier, uh, lesh uh, nyhan syndrome uh, is a rare inherited disease. It is caused due to the deficiency of enzyme HGPRT. Now this uh, disease is expressed only in the males. Now deficiency of the enzyme HGPRT blocks the salvage pathway. So that reduces recovery of uh, guanine and hypoxanthine and since uh, guanine and hypoxanthine are not recovered they are broken down to uric acid and this causes hyperuricemia. So these factors like uh, certain drugs then uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, dehydration uh, then uh, uh, genetic causes can reduce excretion of uric acid. So excess production of uric acid or reduced excretion of uric acid causes hyperuricemia. Now besides this there are few risk factors that also can cause gout disease. Now these includes uh, first as the males, males are more prone to develop gout. Now apart from this diseases like uh, diabetes, obesity, they induce acidic environment in the body. Now this acidic environment stimulates precipitation of uh, monosodium urate crystals and which further causes gout. So this is in brief on the pathophysiology of gout. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.